Hey, welcome to the State of the Union for this week. And man, I am loud. Um, here at the lair in lovely California, Greg is in the kingdom in Mawa. Mahwa. Mahwa. Uh, the people called it the great land. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good land. Yes. Uh, here this week. Sorry we missed last week. Just stuff has been absolutely uh, nuck and futz. Nuck and um, Nuck and futz. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of good stuff going on. You know, it's interesting since we started this podcast, how things have evolved in the past now. June to January, six, yeah. seven months. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of things that changed for me professionally, um, music wise, uh, Greg as well, different ventures we've been in. We're kind of going to touch on some things today that kind of make a lot of sense. Um, they make sense. They, no, they make a lot of sense um, for what you're doing in your daily life, uh, in your professional career. Um, had a great experience this weekend uh, hanging out with the production team, Smile, Lewis, and Ruben, uh, mm -hmm. with my artist, EJ Wright. Mm -hmm. Studio with them right now, uh, recording some new tunes and the stuff, I must say, sounds smoking. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. Um, you know, Evans Records coming out on the second. So that's a whole a job in itself that Greg and I work on. Greg does the marketing for Evan and I'm Evan's manager. So, you know, it, it kind of gives us a, um, hands on hands on. And I think a lot of the time we're finding more and more that guys that we see on YouTube or guys that we see on, um, Instagram aren't really what they say they are. Hmm. Um, and I, we, you know, we want to, you know, expound and implore you to do certain things, expound knowledge on you, but also implore knowledge, implore you to take action in what you're doing in your career. So you want to kick it off, Greg? Sure. Um, well, this is, this is going to, this is interesting because we use our firsthand experiences to bestow upon you, like Mike had said, the knowledge that, you know, from the experiences that we have. And I'd like to just touch on what your experience was this weekend, Mike, and how, you know, that's what we could talk about a bit okay. and um, maybe some industry news as you expressed yep. before with one yep. of our favorite fans of all time. Yep. Uh, so I guess when, when we first, when you first approached me about Evan as an artist and what needs to be done and like the whole marketing strategy and the whole strategy behind everything, you know, we, it's always kind of like, who do we, have in our network of people that can we can leverage to make value add value to Evans you know you know career uh, so we so in doing that I know collaborations is such a huge thing especially going into 2021 and beyond that and especially since there's no shows right now right mm -hmm. um, eventually when there are shows we can do things that are collaborations as well in in certain specific territories but however right now and just in general collabs are such a huge undervalued um, way of getting your name out there because when you're collabing with producers and artists you're able to leverage their audience and they're able to leverage your audience which is, makes su for such a good organic um you know start to something big to for your track so you know when you're let's talk about that so evan's collaborating with about two to three other artists he's an artist himself and just kind of explain that experience. I mean, you know what you're doing with him and how it, how it's evolving. So my experience doing pop records, it's a very different market than when you work with said bands. Yep. Said bands, yes, they do co-write a lot of the time. Bad Wolf's a great example of that one. They have mm -hmm. a lot of co-writers in that band to come up with a, an amazing record. Um, and it's, it, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think there's a stigma to co-writing that people are like, well, it's not my own. And do, do, do. Right. it's like, do you want to be the best you can be? Do you want to mm -hmm. learn to be the best? Mm -hmm. That's Important. my point with collaborations. It's like, aren't you going, you know, I don't know how to play basketball, but if I really wanted to pr play professionally, I would get the best coach to do that. Right. Right. Or Somebody. play on a team that had the best coach to do that. Right. Somebody's to, already to, you know, challenge me and, and, and develop my skills. Mm -hmm. same thing with songwriting yeah you never you're never and the thing is is like with evan or ej um he's you know he is amazing talent mm -hmm. is very young and yeah. you know evan came to me probably back in november and said hey now that you're my manager mm -hmm. i want you to 
Um, I said, well, we're going to need to do, I, I even said to him, I said, we need to do some co-writes. I go, think of several production teams mm-hmm. that you would want to write with mm-hmm. and want to get with and, 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 and kind of make this a boy or girl. Yeah. So what had happened was, is he came to me and said, well, there's this production team smile. I said, not familiar with them. Mm-hmm. Come to find out they're Grammy nominated and they're great guys, Ruben, Ruben and Lewis. Right. And, um, they came over to, or we went over to their house, you know, it was some talk in between, you know, when are we going to do this? Christmas happened. It just, it just took a while just because. Right. Um, and then we, it all happened so fast. So last Monday, James comes to me and their manager and says, Hey, when do you want to schedule this? And I'm like, when you guys open mm-hmm. I said this weekend, I said, great, we're in two thirty. Right. And you get in there. What I saw, you know, and I've worked on a lot of big records, but what I saw of that was this. It was a situation where, you know, in the past, you know, Evan's always ever either, you know, and, and no offense to his parents, they're amazing people, but he's always had someone holding his hand. Like, come sure. on, buddy, we got to do this. We got to do that. Right. I really wanted him at his age to grow. Mm-hmm to be his own independent artist, find himself, find his voice. And I think he's really doing that with these guys. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is you, if you feel stuck and you feel, you know, plateaued um, plateaued or or drugged under, or you feel like you're spinning your wheels. Yeah. um, Musically co-write with somebody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the only thing you need to, to spark it again. Yeah. You know, it's the only thing you need to spark it again. Yep. And I watched Evan kind of do that this weekend where he was on his own. I basically brought him to the session, mm-hmm. gave him his guitar, took the case outside and left it in the lobby of mm-hmm. the studio and sat there for four hours and read about NFTs and like, which we'll talk H- about, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the thing is, is that you kind of, look to that and you say, well, you know, well, I don't want to go right with anybody because of this. It's like, you come do. on, dude. Yeah. It's, it's literally, if you want to, you know, it's been the wave of the future, you know, country artists do it all the fucking time. I mean, They're it's rap a artists. staple oh. rap artists. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that if you're signed to, if, if you don't start playing your career, like you're signed, right. then you're never probably going to get signed. Right. And you're never, nobody's going to, that's what you want. That bigger act that you, you were capable of being. Yeah. Like if you look up, like we always talk about rest of the rapper. Like Mm -hmm. I just got done working on Luke Vaughn's record. I mixed his record. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to follow that model of rest of the rapper where he releases a single every six, four to six weeks. Yep. Yep. It's just wise. It is. And I know we're on the right path with our Mm -hmm. stuff because I talk to big producers and I talk to people in the industry. I say what our strategy is and go, Oh, that's brilliant. That's really good for a new artist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. because that's the wave of the future. It's not like we're making this up. Right. No, no, definitely not. Yeah. We can't just come on here and just say w- what we think is going to work. We want to say what we see is working, what we're applying when we see what's working to our strategy, and then basically calibrating it on the fly with the, with the best type of methods possible. I mean, yeah, there's always going to be you know, obstacles in your way. And I kind of want to touch on that really quick. It's very easy to just, and Russ said this the other day, the rapper, I I share his content all the time. It it was like, you know, nobody's, nobody was, was it? I say it right here. It's, it was on our, let me just get it. It's right here. I got it. It We'll take no time at all. Here you go. It's really good. Um, He said this, when it's your, when it's yours, it will come. Only one, only one in a rush is you, right? So, oh, I saw that you posted that the other day. That's actually a really good way of looking at it. I think we all want to get it out there as soon as possible. I think everyone doesn't want to enjoy the journey. I think there's always this pressure from family, friends, and I want to feel just your ego. Like, just, well, I think also, but but at the mean the mean end of it, everybody wants to feel accepted for what they you know, do or applauded upon. Right. Me, I'm a little different story. I don't care what anyone thinks, but. I think that's, you know, that's more like disciplined. Um, yeah, but me, it's like, I yeah, exactly. I'm very disciplined. So every day I do the same routine every morning to, you know, 
proliferate very great results. And it's, you know, you can, you know, I always feel like, um, everyone goes, well, discipline will wear out eventually bullshit. Hmm. You know, you gotta be behind a mission. It's like, look, if you're a passionate artist and you are literally disciplined every day, like these are the times when I write, these are the times when I practice, these are the times where I handle marketing for my business. Yep. Over time, that those actions will compound. Yep. And those actions will literally become what's the lifeblood of your business of being a musician. Well said. Well said. It I just agree. will. I mean, yeah. it, and that's just, and look, you can be an artist and go, well, you know, business people do this and I'm not that. It's like, look, dude, the best of the best treat this. I could tell you because I've worked with some of them. Mm-hmm. Like, I would watch like cash Campbell who we'll have on here shortly. I remember when he was in barefoot, dude, they had them because mm-hmm. they were trying to kind of figure out where they were going to be. Yeah. Um, band example, by the way, analogy wise. Yeah. Band example. They literally, and this is going back 17 years, but still, um, or 16 years. Still relevant. It's still relevant. The actions of it. You, they were in the studio every day with a different person or they were in the studio with somebody for three or four days mm-hmm. writing. Mm-hmm. And they would turn a song out a day. Mm-hmm. That was yep. not unlikely. Or they would turn two songs out a day or whatever, but we were always tracking, right? putting stuff together. And, and it, you know, and they would do that 30, 60 days in a row with no break. There you go. I mean, let's, I mean, I could tell you guys when you're getting to that point where you're able to churn out a song and a half or two songs a day or one song, that's amazing, by the way. If you can. If you can discipline yourself to not noodle around and mess around and really have an objective when you get in that room um, and to work with somebody in a collab atmosphere, there's a certain type of magic in the air that you capture when you're open to being able to work with other people, even your band, man, like just but like in general to build that discipline is to really go into the room that you're working in that environment and actually have an objective and be like yeah we're going to come up with an actual tune today whether it be a riff that you're working on or 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 something you got to commit to that because when you keep doing that it just becomes a ritual becomes ha- habitual and you just keep getting better and better and better at it and then the more you work with other people you have that neuroplasticity which is your your muscles and your in your brain literally get stronger and they develop faster so i mean i'm going to use an example i'm not i haven't played bass regularly in a long time and i had to lay down my bass tracks the other day with zach zachy <laughs> i learned I was like, all right, am I good enough to actually do this? And if I wasn't, I was going to just let him do it. But, you know, if it took more than five minutes for me not to do and I couldn't do it, I would let him do it. But I was actually catching on. I'm like, okay, I'm getting my my chops up in every way possible. Yes, there's betterment in other areas that I need to still do, which I'm working on as well. But just putting yourself in that the, the driver's seat and can believe in yourself to have that belief that you can you're, you're able to do that. It comes from the constant discipline of going in and just keep keep that regiment going. And like you said before, I think it's really important to block out certain times during the day where you do that and there's a lot in other blocks of time to do your marketing. And so, so you don't get overwhelmed and everything bleeds into one another. So, com- you know, uh, compartmentalizing those areas that are crucial to your success and keeping that regimen every day it just becomes who you are and then it just transfers into the 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 blood you know the lifeblood of your business on how you actually are able to do that every day and that builds momentum and it compounds over time so that's definitely very well said mike um mm. you know as um just just so you know as well it, it could get so overwhelming very quickly. It doesn't have to be that way. So if Mike goes in with Evan and he's there, you know, making sure things are going well and making sure that I'm doing my job and the other people on the team are doing their job, it's just the glue that holds it together. But and, it just and, creates this camaraderie and, and this quickly like, to that point. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, I as Evan's advocate and as his manager, we hire people that we are pretty hundred percent no sure that they're going to do a great job. Yeah. I'm not in there, you know, cracking the whip or any of that shit. Now some people we have had had to do that too. Yeah. Um, just because whatever. Yeah. Um, sometimes people get comfortable and you got to smack them upside the head, but, Mm. um, 
but but yeah, you know, I would never do that. I would never physically touch anyone. Right. You're but talking- but figuratively. Right. Figuratively. Um, but you know, it, it 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 kind of you know you want to also be strategically good about how you're looking after your business because the thing is is that I don't want to be in a situation of causing more problems for myself and going well, this guy's kind of good. Let's just have him write with him for practice. No, we're at a point now where it's like everything's towards growth. Mm -hmm. So I want him to write with everybody who's going to put stuff in front of him that's absolutely locked sure that's going to fit what we're doing moving forward. You don't want to write a song that's going to be not used. You want to write a song and every song that you make, you want it to count as best as possible. Yeah, there's going to be ones that are better than others, but every time you go in, you want to... See, that's the thing. I think the, the the old thing was like let's just turn out thirty tracks and see which ones are best, which is still applicable to today. But I think which when you're is working one of the on best ways of doing it, actually. Well, yeah, you have the stuff, you but could have because you could have a whole album of B sides essentially. Uh, or yeah, right. If you're collabing, yeah. you really make every every song count on yeah. the dot, like because your budget's on the line uh, too. And generally, the the producers or the collab uh, artists are already have something in mind. Uh, before you come in or they come up with something but this is what they do and they have such a plug and play method that it's 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 not like it used to be where it's like takes fucking weeks and weeks and months it's now like okay you could put a melody together and you can really make a really awesome song with the right people in the room to make it happen faster uh, and it's not about it's not about making it happen faster it just does happen to be the right. result is faster because everybody's on the on the same page you're not arguing with people in a band it's so easy to arg- start arguing with somebody because somebody else isn't getting their two cents in, but they n- may not be getting their two cents in because they just don't have anything to give to the song. But then they're taking away what you're doing because you're actually taking the ball and you're making things happen and they're not doing it. When I'm not involved or you just stay there and we'll work on your part later. Let us really tap into this and get this done. We don't have time for the drama, right? We only, we're here to do, a, we're here to get something done. Let's not harp on, you know, you're not understanding where I'm coming from and all this personal shit. Leave it at the door. When you come in, be ready to fucking lay it down and get to work and be open-minded. That's what it comes down to. To be able to collaborate with somebody, like even this weekend for me, collabing with Zachy, I, I'm not great at lead guitar. He's awesome. So why not let him do the things that I'm humming in my head and he does them. And that's... that's Play to people's strengths. Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm fine with that because you know what? He's involved now. He's a co-writer on my shit, and I want him to be because he's awesome, and right. that's okay with me. So be okay with that, you know. And the other thing is, my whole model has changed because I'm not really in a band per se anymore. I'm an artist recording my own stuff, and I really want to collaborate with people that are like-minded like me, and that's going to get me farther along than ever being in a band because being in a band. I wouldn't say it's old. It's like not. It doesn't work. I'm just saying, with what we're talking about right now, you can get a lot more done um, with a lot less drama and streamline all your efforts with getting the right people on board. And that's what Mike's really talking about here is just the team of people that you're working with. Yes, yeah, some may not work out more than others, but at least you're collabing and you're you're working on your network. Mm-hmm. Very important. So um, we're gonna shift gears really quick. Just industry news. Just um, basically on one of our favorite bands, and then kind of talk about a a new type of um, I would say currency out there that's gonna be huge for uh, artists. Artists, right? And when it comes to publishing. So according to Spin Magazine, Sound Guy remembers issue a statement in response to Vicky Cornell's lawsuit. Okay, so uh, Soundgarden, Chris Cornell, Vicky's his wife. Yeah, we are confident that clarity will come out in the court. So basically, what from what I can ascertain from reading this article, well, first off, she is uh, the controlling uh, person of the Cornell estate, being that mm-hmm. she was heir, heir to the fortune, essentially, is right. basically you can look at it. Mm-hmm. And she basically is saying that, well, the guys in the band are buy, trying to buy her rights to uh chris's recorded music for about three hundred thousand dollars as a buyout like here you go goodbye see you later right and what she's stating in the lawsuit is that's for his entire merchandising and and all the other other rights that she gets money from his publishing that's what she's saying is yeah that's what that amount is it's just the actual recorded music buyout right So what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to court and figure it out but this kind of leads to the next thing I want to talk about 
machine comes to me the other day machine the gene machine the producer. freeman uh comes to me the other day and goes dude have you heard about nfts and i was like mm, not really and i called my good buddy justin Taub over at, over at amplify um cryptocurrency and i said what's this deal with this nft yeah explains it to what to me what it is and essentially what it is it's a digital currency mm-hmm. that you actually can own the rights to so it's big for art right now and mm-hmm. for gaming so what you do with it is is you basically use it so let's say you buy a gun in black ops i'm not a big gaming guy so anyone who's laughing at me right now go right fucking for it <laughs> um and you want to use it in say in another game usually what would happen yeah. is, is that would stay inside that game this is now going to allow yeah um from what i can see allow video game companies to allow you to take those assets and bring them over to another video game so you never lose them really yeah there's that part of it interesting then there is these things called and they're, they're, that's going to be big in the collectible market as well okay. now, where this leads to music is that if you have digital rights say publishing mm-hmm. to a song you could buy the aspect of it and it would have all the data and restrictions written into the actual NFT so that you couldn't say, say you wanted to use a piece of music. So there's different types of use rights. In right, music, parameters. Right? Right. Yeah, so there's different types of uses. Usually it's broadcast, industrial, uh, streaming, and uh, what's the fourth one? There's usually like four of them. Broadcast, industrial, streaming, and then um, terrestrial, commercial. commercial, commercial, and you have to do it per territory. Whoever owns the publishing in that space, right? So say you bought song A, B, and C, and you only have the rights to use it in the United States for broadcast. Yeah, but the company wanted to try to use it in Europe. There would be some sort of code written in there that the right. second you tried to play it, it wouldn't play. Okay, so it would totally block that from happening. Block it. You could, that's, that's what I gather from it in, re- in real time, in real time. It would just be like, sorry, right. Not how you see here. Right. Can't okay. open this in this, in this territory. So the benefit of that would be more, uh, control. Gives, over yeah. Music. Gives control back to the artist. They're also talking about doing this with concert tickets and how it would eliminate the scalping situation. 100%. Wow. This okay. could technically turn the music business back around to where it was. Okay. That's pretty interesting. What does NFT stand for? Non fungible token. Cool. Fungible meaning this is that like- it's not inter- non fungible meaning it's interchangeable. Actual physical dollars would be fungible where it is interchangeable between hands. Very good. Cool. So that's how that would kind of kind of work. That's great. Yeah. Um Wow. Okay. So, so this is going to unfold in the next couple months. Uh, You're talking years, but the thing is, is that it's one of the newest cryptocurrencies out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm following it very heavily because there's some business ventures that Greg and I are doing that this might benefit. Great. And um, thanks not, for having again, pulse. not offering advice, just reporting what yeah, we just kind of found. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just All right. Throwing that out there really interested in seeing how that unfolds and i do too like uh, very excited about it actually mm. hold in your excitement in there like a little small child mm. the child the child, the child. Inside. Um, all right guys that is a week of the union yeah. hit us up on where greg www.themusiccombine.com, The Music Combine on Instagram, The Music Combine Now on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, just go to music, themusiccombine.com and everything's right there. However, uh, this week we have Friday, we have G. Paul, G. Paul uh, another amazing artist, producer, engineer, teacher, professor. Um, so he's got a lot of knowledge to drop. We had a great conversation with him. And uh, yeah, again, you know, anything you guys want to talk us to talk about and cover, you can hit us up uh, through the website, DM us on Instagram, The Music Combine. And thank you for the support, and we will continue to bring it for you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on Friday with Jeep Paul, and we'll see you next Sunday, hopefully, for the State of the Union. You got it. Bye-bye.